Peace to all the saints of the Most High God. Um, we always want to give honor to the Most High God through a son whose name is Yahushua, whom we call Jesus, and recognize that he's all he's bought all of us. Whether we know it or not, he's bought all of us. And it's our duty once we know to obey him and to have faith in him and make sure that uh, we put ourselves in the position that we remain in his love. Um, today, we uh, come here because we want to, you know, send greetings and, and share a little bit of knowledge that the Most High God has revealed to us, to everybody who's willing to listen. Um, first, I want to thank everybody who joined us for the Bible in a year. Really, really great and awesome for everybody who uh, did that. But without further ado, my name is Philip. Um, this is my brother Terrence. How do you do? And uh, we, we definitely want to get on here. We want to take a look at our first week of reading. Uh, for the first week, we start off in Genesis. Uh, so we looked at creation and we look at uh, the fall of man, as, as we call it. And so in that, we see what happened to Adam and Eve. Now, this is very popular. Everybody feels like they know it. We all know it. But something that we really have to pay close attention to because we're warned over in 2 Corinthians 11 to uh, not fall to the same subtlety. Um, I'm sorry, the same craftiness that the serpent used on um, on Eve. So we need to find out exactly what was that, because if, if we're warned today not to do that or not to fall in that same type of way, it must be something we're missing. Right. So we can look back there and we're going to um, take a close look at it. If you have your Bible, go to Genesis three. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, then just pause the video. <laughs> but yeah, Genesis chapter three, we're going to start at verse one. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Right? So she she um, she quoted God, paraphrased what God said to her, or to Adam rather, what she heard. And she said, well, he didn't say that we couldn't eat of any tree, right? Because that's the first thing that the serpent did. He tried to confuse what, what God actually said, kind of misconstrue his words. He said, well, he said, you can't eat from any tree. So she corrected him. No, no, no. I know my word, right? No, 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 no. He didn't say we can't eat from any tree. He just said we can't eat from the tree that's in the midst of the garden. And if we touch it, we'll die. So now let's stop. Let's go back to um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. So we can see exactly what God said to Adam. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest uh, thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right. So he said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So you, the day that you eat that, you're going to die. All right. So now let's go back. Let's go back um, to Genesis chapter three. Where do we leave off? Verse two, three, four, four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. All right, well, I'll keep going. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. All right, so now the serpent told her, you will not surely die. Completely opposite of what God said, right? Said you absolutely would not die, right? So our, our question is, what was his lie? We know Jesus tells us that he was a liar from the beginning, right? From the beginning, he lied. So we know he was a liar. But what exactly was his lie, right? First thought, we'll say, well, God said they'll die, and he said they wouldn't. We know God is true, so obviously he lied. But let's take a look at it, right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. All right. So we saw that Eve ate the ate the fruit and gave it to Adam and he ate also. Genesis chapter five, verse five. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years and he died. All right. So he didn't die. Till he had nine hundred and thirty. The Most High God said in that day, you will surely die. Technically, Satan ain't lie about that. Right. So let's go back over to uh, Genesis three. All right. Let's read what else Satan said. What is that? Verse four. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. Well, verse 6 now. Um, Let's we'll go back to verse 4 so we can see what else Satan said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in a day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right? So he told them that if you eat it, you'll be just like God. You'll know good and evil. Right? 
He got to know you be just like him, right? That's the second thing he said. We can look at that and be like, oh, they didn't eat it and become God. Well, let's look at it, right? Go down, drop down to um, verse 22. Let's see what God's testimony is. And the Lord God said, behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. All right. So he, his own testimony, the most high God himself, he said himself that he became just like us. All right. So that means that Satan technically didn't lie about them dying in that day. Right. Technically he didn't die. They, they, they lived today at 900 something. Right. And technically he didn't lie about them becoming like God. Right. Most high God repeated the same thing. He said, well, he became like us. All right. But now let's pay attention to exactly when he died. All right. A lot of times we'll look at death as just to stop breathing or stop existing. Remember what the Bible considers that for a believer is sleep, right? When when uh, Lazarus died, Jesus didn't say he was dead. He said, oh, he just sleep. The, the young lady that Jesus resurrected said she is just sleep, right? So we consider that sleep for us believers, those, those of us that have faith, not death, right? So the most high God looks at things a lot differently than us. So when he says you should surely die, let's see what he means. We're going to go to verse 22. All right, keep reading the 23. I think you love all. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the God, therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That's when he died, right? He died because flaming swords kept the way of life. It cut him off from life, right? These flaming swords came and they were chopping each and each and every direction, cutting off his way to life. To be cut off from life is death, right? In that very day, he died. Sure, it may look like he lived until he was 930, but in reality, in what God's definition, he died. So the subtility of the serpent is to change definitions, to mix up God's word. That's why you have a lot of people understanding, not understanding what believe and faith means. People have faith in all types of things, thinking that's the saving faith. When the Bible, the definition of faith is this word. You have faith in what this word says, not faith in what you think you're going to do or faith in what you, you're going to have unless this word confirms it. Um, believing, right? If we look at the word believe, we just think, well, affirm something is true in your head. No, with the Bible, believing has everything to do with how you live, right? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him righteousness. And then if you jump over to, to Genesis 17, it shows that he was justified by the things that he did based off of his belief. All these things go hand in hand. So it's important for us to understand what the Bible means about words, what God's word means about words, and not just listening to what the world would tell us. Because then we'll fall to the same subtility that Satan caused Eve to fall with as a serpent. All right. I want to leave us with one thing, one blessing thing that we, we, we look at. Let's skip all the way to the end of the book. Revelation chapter 22 at the very end. All right. We just started off at the beginning. Let's just see. Let's just take a sneak peek at what the end says. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And that's it. Right. We consider a whole lot of things blessings. The Bible says blessed are those who do his commandments. Peace. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Anything anybody needs, just let us know. Um, I'm going to leave my number and email on here also. So definitely um, give us a ring if you have any questions. Give us an email if you have any questions. We'll do our best by the spirit of the most high God to answer anything. Um, may the spirit keep us in all patience until we endure to the end. And let this mind be in you. That is also in Christ Jesus. Amen.